Shai, Shalawan, Barakata, Barakata. <clears throat> Not sure how long y'all be live. I'm struggling with my voice. But I had to do a response on um, Elder Rakar on GOCC talking about Edomites are going to get salvation. That is a bold face lie. Let's go ahead and go into it. Rakta Yahawa, Rakta Yahawa Shai, Kohalayla, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Can E be saved? Let's go. <clears throat> Many of you saw my live stream that I did yesterday. Evil E totally shut down my live stream yesterday. The entire lesson is muffled. And we still got people coming against what we teach. You're going against what we teach. In these last days, the Most High is going to kill you. Point blank, period. Like evil, recall from GLCC. Evil E was created to be destroyed. Let's go to Romans chapter 9. Shalom, beloved, Barakata. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 9. So the Edomites were created to be used as a whipping stick, a rod of correction, and then destroyed. So they were made to be destroyed. The Bible proves that. So how is Elder Rakar saying that they're going to get salvation. Let's go to Romans chapter 9. <coughs> Book of Romans chapter 9. Let's start at verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. We can stop right here. My brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. This is a noble bloodline. Shalom, beloved sister, lady of the hopeful elect. So we can stop right here. According to the flesh. Let's read it again. Romans 9, verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises pertaining to the adoption Israelites can be grafted in that were scattered throughout all the earth and the glory the Israelites are going to be raised up to fame and occupy thrones of glory 
and be raised up in the eyes of the nations, starting with this gospel and eventually a physical departure by the chariots of the Lord and the covenants, the old and new covenant is promised to the Israelites, not the caveman. So what Bible is Elder Recall from GOCC reading? If you're not teaching a true doctrine, you are not an elder. And the giving of the law. So he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. As for the other nations, he had not known them. That's Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. And the service of God, who are the prophets, are cavemen prophesying in mass number in these last days. Where they at? Who's hitting the streets? Coming out of the Bible every day. And the services of God. Who did we wake up to this truth by? Judah. Starting at one west. Judah was raised up. Followed by the other tribes. So the service of the Most High is to the Israelites. We woke up to the prophets of Israel through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and the promises, whose promise? The Holy Land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Israelites. This is why the gospel of Paul is under attack. This is why they hate Paul because Romans chapter nine by itself destroys false Christianity. So the promises of the kingdom is to Israel. Rulership is to Israel, dominion, Immortality promised to the Israelites. Who's are let's go to verse 5. Romans 9, verse 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh the Mashiach came, who is over all the most high blessed forever. See, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, Edom, Esau is nowhere in the equation. The old covenant to the Israelites, a new covenant to the Israelites, the promises, eternal life, dominion and rulership to the Israelites. Verse seven, let's go to verse six, Romans nine, verse six. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So any lack of Israel is going to see salvation on this side. A remnant, a lack, or seven, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, so the promises are through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Esau was cut off, rejected. Somebody post that, please. And um, I think it's Second Answers chapter three. Esau was put by. Brother Andre Servin, Yahusha, Sirach 17, verse 17. Or in the divisions of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Beautiful. 
from the Most High said, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet I hated Esau. And in Malachi 3 and 6, he does not change. Brother Courtney Everett, Amos 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Consistent theme, salvation, mercy to Israel, judgment, recompense, and destruction to the Edomites. So the caveman is going to be beat down to the caves of the earth, beat to powder, to the dust. Somebody post Micah 7 and 10. Their forefather is the serpent. No, not Micah 7 and 10. One moment. Not Micah 7 and 10. Micah 7 and 17. So their bloodlines go back to the serpent. Brother Aramia, Brother Andre serving you house shy, and Brother Maccabees, 144. I'm going to go to 2nd Exodus, chapter 3. The book of 2nd Exodus, chapter 3, verse 16. And unto him, that him is Abraham. And unto him, thou gavest Isaac. And unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him unto thee and put by Esau. So Jacob became a great multitude. So that innumerable multitude that we read about in Revelation chapter 7 is talking about the Israelites, which include the Israelite foreigners that were scattered to all nations. Brother Gabar Adama, Hebrews 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So who is Esau? Is this talking about one individual? Somebody post Genesis 36 and 8. Who is Esau? There was only one individual rejected. Let's read that again. Brother Gabar Gama, Hebrews 12, verse 17. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And Brother Andre serving Yahweh, Matthew 15, verse 24. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who is Esau? Brother. One moment. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So Edom is rejected. The borders of wickedness. See? A people. And they are of the serpent 
seed. Let's get that. Brother Shapar of the 12 and Brother Aranya, Micah 7 or 17. They shall lick the dust. Somebody post that in uh, Genesis chapter 4. That he's going to be a vagabond. I think it's verse 14. Brother Aramia and Brother Shapar of the 12. Micah 7 and 17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord, our power, and shall fear because of thee. Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delight in mercy that remnant Mercy promised to the Israelites. Brother Gabar Dama. Micah. <coughs> Brother Gabar Dama. Micah 1, verse 4. So this is a curse, people. And in Malachi 3, verse 6, he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Brother Gabar Dama. Micah 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom say we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places thus saith the lord of hosts they shall build but i will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the lord hath indignation forever you're destroyed elder recall from glcc they're teaching a false doctrine. So they're going to be beat to the dust of the earth. Rejected. Esau was rejected. Pursuant to Hebrews 12 and 17. Pursuant to Genesis 36 and 8. They are a rejected people. Edom. Esau is Edom. Brother Maccabees. Let's get this one. Brother Maccabees, 144. Second Exodus. Second Exodus 6. Brother Maccabees, 144. Second Exodus chapter 6. Verse 54. And after these, Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, that before thee, verse 50, second after six, verse 54, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also, whom thou hast chosen. We all come from Adam, but the most high has sifted out and remnant and elect chosen unto himself. Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, but be like. Verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. And to devour us. So we've been devoured by our enemies. 
and pursue it to Psalms 83. The enemies of Israel are the other nations. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But be thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. So they have a reputation of being nothing. That's why we read Micah 7 and 17. They're going to crawl out of the holes of the dust. They are nothing Lay in the balance. Somebody post Isaiah. I think we got it. Isaiah 40 and 17. Somebody posted that. Here we go. Brother Gabar Adama. Isaiah 40 verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. So they are counted as dust particles. Slaves are 17. All nations before him, Isaiah 40 and 17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him as less than nothing and vanity. So the other nations are like the dust of the earth when they're weighed in the balance. They are like the chaff that bloweth away. They are not even worthy for a sacrifice. Nothing. Brother Shapat, Brother Shapat of the Twelve, Romans 9, verse 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? So these devils are tailor made to be raised up as a whipping stick and destroy the sandcastle that you smash when you were a little boy to show your wrath, your strength, your power. Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So the cave man was made to be destroyed. He is a savage beast made to be taken and destroyed. Brother Adon Nana, 2 Nazar 6, verse 7, then answered I and said, what shall be the party asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Got cut off. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So a consistent theme. Let's keep going. I'm going to do a simple word search or cut off. So the Most High is going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. So we know that Esau, Edom goes back to Cain. They are the Canaanites reincarnated. Brother Andre serving Yahusha. Genesis 4, verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. 
Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. For the Bible says, the earth shall rise up against him. In Job 20, verses 23 through 27, they're going to slay the wicked. Isaiah 14, verse 21 says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord. How in the hell do they get salvation? How in the hell do they get salvation when he's talking about destroying them? So the wicked are going to be cut off and destroyed. The Bible says in Malachi 1, verse 4, they are the border of wickedness. Brother Adam Nana, Malachi 1, verse 4. Somebody post Proverbs 16 and 4. Malachi 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever, a righteous anger tied to a righteous hatred. They were made fit to destruction, tailor made to be destroyed. Border of wickedness, wherever they go, they spread a serpent seed, false doctrine, medical tyranny, L G A B C D F G I groups, all types of wickedness, feminism, democracy, white supremacy. They are poisonous, a virus on the earth. Brother Andre Servin, Yahawashai, Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So they're made for bad times. They're made to bring in a storm. They're made to come in like a flood. They're made to punish those that go off. They are made to be an example of how not to live. They are made to be an example of bloodshed. They are made to be an example of a bad model, a vessel of wrath fitted to destruction, tailor-made to be cut off and destroyed. Let's go. That's right. Validate his power on the earth. What happened to ancient Pharaoh and his chariots? What happened to the ancient Egyptians and their armies? They were slaughtered, prepared slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. Let's go. Brother Sarai. Brother Sarai, Malachi 4, Verse 3, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. How can you show power, might, and strength without wicked cave beasts to tread down and subdue under us? How can we show our might if we don't tread down Okay, man, how do we show the Most High is going to have mercy on Jacob if we don't see a vessel of dishonor judge 
and destroyed. How do you make a distinction without a caveman as an example of a savage as to how not to live? Brother Adam Nana, Job 18, verse 16. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. That means cut off from being a nation. Let's get it. Oh, if you don't, if you don't understand who the wicked is in the Bible, you're not going to understand who is going to be destroyed in the last days. Let's get it. We're going to pick up from where Adam Nana left off. Psalms 109, verse 13. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Who is this talking about? Elder Rakan. You tell me. Show us the way. Let's go back to Adam now. That links in with the scripture that I had next. Brother Adam Nana, Job 18 and 16. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above. Shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth. And he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. Lucifer, son of the morning, I'm going to chase you out of the earth. See? Let's go. The light bearers, the Illuminati, the Luciferians are going to be chased out of the world. Psalms 101 verse 8. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Oh, he's going to build the tabernacle of David, a faithful city, and cut off men and beasts and remnant from it, the wicked. Verse, let's go back to Psalms 109, verse 13. For a small, a small salvage amount of these global international bankers are going to be preserved for slavery, but cut off means destroyed. Psalms 109, verse 13. Let his posterity be, be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Beautiful. Psalms 109, verse 15. Let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. What Bible is recall reading? Brother Gabar Adama. Let's go here first. Brother Aranda. Surah 16, verse 15. The Lord hardened Pharaoh, that he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. Let's read that again. My voice is shot. So we had to have a bad apple, a bad example. We had to know what the wrath of the Most High looked like on vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Let's read that again. Brother Aranya, Sirach 16, 
Verse 15. The Lord hardened Pharaoh that he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. See, but Jacob was created for a vessel of mercy to show the Most High's eternal love. Esau was created as a vessel of wrath to show the power in the Most High to take down this caveman's global kingdom under the international bankers. Brother Gabar Dama. Job 20, verse 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it within his mouth. Looked like there was some more to that. There were cars bugged out. Let's keep going. Psalms. Watch this. Psalms 143, verse 12. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Who's being destroyed? Who's being destroyed? and cut off to be made an example of who who fits the bill everybody comes back in their lot was not the Edomites subdued under King David followed by the other nations so how is that mercy or salvation excuse me how is that salvation that's not salvation that's pure judgment. And after a thousand years, somebody posts Obadiah, verse 18. So the other nations are going to be shown limited mercy after a thousand years. But Esau, Edom, the wicked, is going to be cut off forever. Matter of fact, Psalms 143. Let's get this one. One moment. My voice is dying. Somebody posts over dying. Verse 10. We get ready to destroy Elder Rakan. False doctrine right here, right now. Obadiah, verse 10. Brother Andre Servin, Yahushai, and Brother Gabar Java. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. How is that salvation? When I'm being beat to powder, stubble on the earth. What are Obadiah? Verse 10. Brother Andre serving Yahushai. Obadiah, verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. Cut off. How is that salvation? You got to be an absolute dumbass to say they're going to get salvation. That means you're spiritually retarded. Don't get mad. I'm just a messenger. Don't get mad. Let's go to Psalms 37, verse 28. We're getting ready to bury the false prophet that the caveman can be delivered. We're getting ready to bury you. Psalms 37, verse 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not 
his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Can't get around it. A vessel of mercy, Jacob, preserved forever. Salvation, but the seed of the wicked cut off. And that forever is it's by default understood a perfect judgment cutting off the seed of the wicked preserving the seed of the righteous forever. Yup, brother prince of Yahweh. Second Maccabees 7 verse 31 and thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh. Punish them. No, there's more to that. So this was going to uh, Greek captivity. All right. So the Edomites were being condemned. Our forefathers knew that they were the wicked, knew that they did not get resurrection to life or salvation. There was more to that. Somebody posted, here we go. Brother Andre serving in Hobshire. Amos 1, verse 11. Thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Teman which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Their kingdom, their establishment is going to be brought to nothing. Remember? Malachi 1 and 4. The K-man shall build, but Yahweh shall throw down. We read that in Malachi 1 and 4. Let's go back to Psalms 37. My voice is sharp. Bear with me. But I couldn't let that video stand as the caveman getting salvation. Oh, hell no. I don't care if I got to speak with a hoarse voice. Psalms 37, verse 28, or verse 26. Psalms 37, verse 26. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now we got to go to Isaiah chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Who is the blessed seed? Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Man, what is Recall reading? This man is crazy as hell. Let's go to Psalms, Psalms 37. Verse 20, watch this. Psalms 37, verse 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. We read, they're going to be like stubble in Obadiah 18. Break that down, false prophet. Break that down. So how are they going to get salvation and be stubble and chaff and consumed in a fire forever? A sword is coming to you. Whiskey Alpha Novembers. Wicked ass ninjas. Psalms 37 verse 28. O the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Can't get around it. Can't 
get around it. How's the Most High going to say they're going to be cut off and yet give them salvation? Hell to the nizzo, to the no, to the no. I want to put a sword on you whiskey alpha Novembers. A sword. Brother Aranga, Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. See, the other nations are not promised the kingdom of rulership, dominion. That's salvation. Brother Gambar Dunn, Isaiah 14, verse 21. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. See, they're going to be totally destroyed with a small remnant of KBs. The international bankers are going to go into slavery. So destroyed in the military, when we say that that unit is destroyed, it means combat ineffective. So the militaries of Edom are going to be destroyed. We read about that where? Isaiah chapter 34 and Isaiah chapter 63. So we would say a unit is destroyed, combat ineffective, which means they would be below 50% strength, below 50% strength, destroyed. Brother Gabar Dunn, Isaiah 14, verse 22. Well, I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A room of fire. They showed this in that movie. I think it was Terminator. Can't remember the name of the movie. Looks like a room of fire sweeping across Babylon. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. No recall says the K man is going to get salvation. You got to pay for that. Recall. Geo, I can't see. You got to pay for that. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. And the time to pay is on its way. Whiskey Alpha Novembers. Wicked ass ninjas. You got to pay. Bubble eyed blackfish from Geo, I wish I could see. You got to pay. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Brother Gabar Dunn, Isaiah 14, verse 23. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Brother Aramia, Isaiah 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. So who is associated 
with vengeance. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, tailor made to be destroyed. We got to take our time. Who is the vessel of mercy made to be an example of goodness, of his pleasure, righteousness, salvation, perfect balance? Somebody corrected me. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Thank you, brother. Let's read that again. So the message is hidden in the scriptures. And without the Holy Spirit, you're going to be like bugged out, bubble-eyed blackfish. From Geo, I wish I could see. Let's read that again. Brother Aranga. Isaiah 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeem is come. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. All the seeds of the wicked shall be cut off. What Bible are they reading? Bug out. I mean bug out. You can't help a bug out. They got demons on them. They got a legion of demons. In a Roman army, one legion is 5,000 soldiers, upwards of 7,000 on a large legion. Bug out. Let's close out here. My voice is dry. Somebody post Isaiah 14, verses, verses 1 through 3. A consistent theme. Vessels of mercy fit for salvation to show his love and righteousness and vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. The Most High is balanced. The men of the Lord balance. We're not going to tell you what you want to hear. We're going to tell you what you need to hear. Brother Aranya, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. How can he show recompense, vengeance, without the troublemakers, without the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? How can he show the seed of the wicked will be cut off without the caveman being raised up for a vessel of wrath pursuant to Romans chapter 9. My goodness. Isaiah 14. Like I said, I was not feeling good. And after I saw that video, my elder recalled, on GOCC, I jumped up and said, oh, hell no. Hell no. Caveman salvation? Hell no. Brother Aranya and Brother Bayan Yasharala. Let's read this verse. Awaken to the truth. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. See? But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off forever. Perfect balance. Let's close out Isaiah 14. Voice is dry. Isaiah 14. We're going to get verses 1 through 3. Isaiah 14. Verse 1. Brother Aranya, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land 
and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Israelite foreigners are being reconsolidated and reorganized under the tabernacle of David. These are Israelites scattered into all nations, calling themselves Gentiles, heathen. Verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So these Israelites that are being raised up and they are being assigned, categorized under the new holy mountain. They're going to rule over these other nations where they've been scattered under the authority of the tabernacle of David, under Yahweh Shai. Make sense? So in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto thee, ye are the sons of the living God. Hosea 1 and 10. So they're at the same land where they were servants. They're going to be raised up as rulers. See that? Wow. The same land where they were told they are, that, that <coughs> where they were told that they are nothing. Isaiah, Isaiah 14, Shalom, beloved elder, Barakatha. Isaiah 14, verse 3, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. So Israelites being reestablished, reunited under the tabernacle day is going to rule over those that hate us, those that called us nothing, nigger, spit, ape, Gentile, heathen, Sambo, Uncle Tom, three-fifths of a man. We're going to rule over our oppressors. No more voice left. Hopefully this has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kod Kadash, Barak Thumb. The cave man must not get salvation. He is the wicked and is going to be chased out of the world. His very name is a nomen omen, which means wasted away is he. Esau or Ishashira, wasted away is he. His name is a nomen omen. Elder recall, and from the geo, wish I could see. Okay? K-men don't get salvation. His name means Wasted away is he. Let's go. Climb your shirala and the bow, bow, bow. Rock a thumb. Let's go. Let's go. So the caveman is going to be cut off and chased out of the world. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, DTA, Abba, Baba, Shalom.